The views, comments, and opinions of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of Morris Media Studios, MorrisMediaLive.com, or its affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. More terrible, the great train robbery, wild Apache with Joel, Navajo, Seminole, wanted, haunted, things that done in life will go down in history. Didn't want to have to do this, but the gunslinger back in town. Cowards them a scatter, yet the children them a gather round. Let them come, let them come. It's the ancient gypsy, Pancho Villan. I've been dumbed down, numbed down. Stumble round the saloon. Drunk as fuck by high noon. Fed his story, pissing human shit. Going out in a blaze of glory, fuck Baphomet. I got Gatling guns, 200 clips, EMPs, lasers, cowboys, aliens. It's an invasion. Chug a slug of whiskey, itchy drink, and freaking sick. Circle up the wagons, posse up and go quick. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back the fuck in. Who? Franklin, Benjamin, Jackson. Why? They keep killing black men. So I'm coming to the sheriff, the deputy, and the captain. This ain't about rapping, it's about whatever, I'm man. General, but I'm still down. Good evening, action. ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a battle rapper. Welcome to another episode of Al Tuma. I'm your host, Al Tuma. And tonight we will once again be discussing a plethora of multifarious topics that are very controversial and um, funny. Um, Let's get the formalities out of the way. We're here at Morris Studios as we are here every Wednesday at 6.30. I um, encourage you to... um, um, Please give your response on the chat line. Uh, we love, uh, and, and, and Laurent, don't forget to do that. When people are chatting what they're saying, let me know, because I, you know, I don't have a screen to see anything, so when somebody's saying anything, let me know what's going on in that chat room, and um, just let me know. Right, also, okay. the number here is uh, 323-293-3375. Please call in with your thoughts. We welcome them all. And uh, thank you all for the... Um, Supporting Tumor's Town. I've been doing this uh, 13 months now, a little bit over a year. And I think the few fans that I do have for helping me put the bricks into what is going to grow up to be something astronomical. So we thank you all. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I mean, um, let me go ahead and introduce my uh, guest. One of my favorite goddamn people. He's appeared on this show more than anybody else because of his controversial topics, and uh, people love to hate him. And those are the kind of motherfuckers <laughs> you want, a multifarious, controversial motherfucker. Please welcome Mr. Lionel Dalton. And how you doing today, man? What's up? Uh, what's going on, man? I, oh, we're going to switch that up. I don't think nobody hate me, and people love White men love me, man. I'm doing good. I just got passed at the comedy store, baby. I feel good. Here we go. Hey, you got to put another L on that, man. It's two L's with Lionel, man. Two L's at the end, man. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, man, first of all, I want to say, man, yeah. it's an honor to be here with you, brother. Yeah. You're looking good. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? You stay black on black. You're always ready for war. Thank yeah, you. man, if I know if I ever need a nigga to get my back, I know I, I can come I to got you. it. Yeah, yeah, man, you got, got my it. motherfucking back. Exactly. Long as we can get them. Yeah, so you say, no, you, no, there no, we go. White man loves you. <laughs> Fuck everybody else. Nah, nah I, ain't I love, mad I at love you. my people. I love, I love my people, man. The <laughs> <laughs> black folks turn well, into so bad. I could have said, damn it, that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can get in with him, it'll be you. But yeah. I hope you the spook the set by the door when you do get in there. Get in that motherfucking ball. But tell us about this comedy store thing before we get in all this other stuff. Man, listen, listen, listen I, was try, I was trying to go live for it because I know I, I like to get the people, you mm-hmm. know, to see you, man. But I, I do it I do it after after the break. Yeah. But, uh, no, nah, I went to the comedy store the other day, man. You know, comedy store got like this open mic audition. Yeah. And it's, it's every Monday. You know, you know, comedy yeah, store is like, it, yeah. that's the, as a comedian, when you come out here as a comic, the comedy store is like the comedy dream. Store, that's the dream. That's Factory, Richard Pryor. Improv, yeah. All yeah, all but... The, Comedy Comedy store, store, Richard Pryor, like my, my idol's Richard Pryor, man, yeah. you know, and, you know, of course, you know, I admire your work, too, you there know, you but go. Paul Mooney, Richard Pryor, all the greats came to the comedy store, man, uh, you know, Dave Chappelle, uh, you know, you, you name it, Chris Rock, yeah. been there, so people don't know, as a comedian, the comedy store have an open mic. Yeah. And it's every Monday, and it's three minutes. Yeah. You got three minutes to prove yourself, but here's the catch, though. It's a list you got to sign, yeah, and they only get there like four or five to sign that. No, you know you got to get there like like uh, you were twelve o'clock. <laughs> you, <look laughs> you got to get there early. The list come yeah. out. The list come out probably around like at uh, 
five o'clock, five thirty. Yeah. And it's like a bunch of bees. It's so many comedians. It's bunch. Once yeah. that list is one piece of paper and and if, and no pen. So you yeah. gotta you gotta be on your best behavior to get a pen for somebody to sign your name. Yeah. So I signed my name, and it's not a guarantee. Everybody, nobody's. They only pick twenty one people. Right. I think. Mm-hmm. Get my name called up, you know. Now, mind you, I didn't did, I've been doing this thing for years. Yeah. For years showing up, man. You know, without no car, on a bus. So you go up to the comedy store. It's not guaranteed you're going to uh, get on the list. Yeah. Man, I got on that list, man. And they was I was number six. The booker was there. I got on that damn stage. And what's so dope about it, you got all comedians there. And, you know, when, when comedians Comedian try to audition. Comedians haters, yeah. He said it before I said it. <laughs> when you Sitting in the audience mad, ain't laughing at nothing. Right, right, right. Everybody right. the bomb. We want to be the only motherfucker to shot. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's all comedians. Yeah. They all on one side. It's probably like twenty of them, thirty of them. Yeah. And you got them over here. So you know, comedians ain't trying to laugh at nothing. No, they want to get up there and 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 do their thing. But man, I got up there, and when you make comedians laugh, yeah. That's, that's, that's when you know you on thing. Yeah. you on something. So yeah. I called me off that motherfucking stage. He's like, hey, Lionel, we like you, and uh, we're gonna uh, we just call in, and uh, we're gonna give you some, you know, some spots. So right. they finna get the chalk and write your name on the wall outside. Hopefully, right? hopefully, put hopefully your soon. picture up, man. Some I'm of them pictures going to start coming down, man. They running out of room over there. Man, <laughs> <laughs> nah, they they making some. Dead they making some. They might have to take prize picture down. They got to make room for other motherfuckers. Man, There's only bro. so much room. That they could put for them pictures and, you know, writing right. people's name on the wall out there. I wrote my own name on the wall out there, and they still ain't took it they down. T- they, it's still up there? Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, well, you need to be up there, though. Yeah, but, you know, I just wasn't willing to go through all the changes of this shit, man. I saw Robin Ayers was the first comedian to bring me on stage. Wow. And I saw him make it right across the street here on Crenshaw and 43rd. When you were good enough, white Hollywood would come to you, and they, they came to him. So I went over there and went through that, which you went through like 20 years ago, man. I went up and did standing ovations like like two straight months. It would well, take three months off and, and come back. It's like, you can't even alter what yeah, the fuck I'm but, doing. But you got to be strong both. I realize in, in the black rooms, you got to be strong. And in the white rooms, you got to be strong. You can't let neither room defeat you. Because the black rooms, like, you're funny. Say, say you're funny. I'm funny. There's so many funny motherfuckers in the black rooms. Yeah. And... They, we we it's like crabs in a barrel. We trying to we trying to we yeah. trying to do any and everything yeah. to throw you off your square, right. and that can hurt you too. Yeah. So so you see how I was bickering goes. I was listening to Godfrey on a uh, black TV, and he Shout was talking about how how black comedians because they always set it up, man, for one of us to get through it. Ain't but one of us gonna be a mega star at a, at a time. One by one. That's how they do it. It ain't like, you know, the white comedians where it's just, it's just a plethora of these motherfuckers. But one mega motherfucker. It was Ke- it's Kevin Hart now. Well, here's the thing. Ke- it was Cat. It was Mike. It was Mike Epps. But they never mm-hmm. let a flood of niggas through to just be glorious at the same time. But you know what I think? I think a lot of a lot of black comedians don't want to be mega. Like, to be, like, people understand. To be mega with... I just, like, I, I study Kevin Hart, man. Shout out to Kevin Hart, man. I, I just got this reading articles on Kevin Hart, man. Mm-hmm. That brother life is serious. Yeah. Like, you can't, a lot of people hate on that brother, but that brother life is so serious, man. I'm talking about, he get up at 5.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Work out at 5.30. You know, got to get the, like, the, the brother job is so serious, man. Mm-hmm. But you got some millionaires that's happy. Like, for example, you got, like, Dion Cole. Yeah. That brother is is eating. He might not be a mega star, but that brother is a star. He, he, you, and people know Dion. D is on Dion's on TV, man. Yeah. They got them comedians all around this world that yeah, they don't do no TV. You don't know them, and they still right. make it a couple of million a year. Right, going to Vegas and, and yeah. traveling around the world. And some people's happy with that. Yeah, yeah, because that mega. It's it's a lot of come with that, yeah, man. Yeah, it does. It's a lot of come with you giving up from that. You yeah, you giving up a lot of freedom for that mega. Like Kevin Hart, get, he's giving up so much. Yeah. But you, you know, set yourself up to be Bill Cosby when you just that large. They're only gonna let you have your day for so long, and then you're gonna have to pay a certain price to um, for what we've given you. It's like right, like the, what they, they say. They, uh, it's, uh, 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 so we got in the chat room. Uh, Kevin Haynes was uh, Kevin Haynes saying, uh, "Hey Lionel, when you get a chance, try to make us laugh." <laughs> it's okay. T- 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 tell him I said, uh, keep those depends off you. 
Well, you said keep the what? <laughs> the pins. <laughs> That's cool. Don't worry about it. fucking grown folks diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, man. So congratulations on that. And like Thank I you, said, man. now Thank that you, you in there, you can invite. That's the thing about it. Uh, you could invite your own industry over there. They'll come there. And that's right. why I was so impressed by Robin Harris. Robin Harris had white people coming over here mm-hmm. on Crenshaw and 43rd to see right. him because they saw the money at it. So that's the way I always looked at it. You know, you do your thing that way, but now that you in there, go and get in all of them. And there's going to always be opportunities there for you to, you know, to do more since you're in there now. So right, I'm right, proud right, right. of you, boy. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, oh, man. I, yeah. Like, I... It's so dope, man, because I really studied the comedy, man. I'm reading a book right now. It's called uh, Prior Lives, man. And his his best friend wrote a guy named Cecil Brown. You know Cecil Brown? It was like one of his best friends. He he, he wrote uh, Which Way Is Up. He did a lot of movies. Him and, like, he was the guy with Richard Pryor in the beginning stages yeah. of his career and watched how he just blossomed. Yeah. And he give you really, real good stories that that help young African American brothers that's that's in comedy right. or that's in the in the film business. It gives you great advice. I mean, when they say you want to learn something, put it in the book. Right. And me reading that book, man, it gave me a lot of uh, insight on. Ah, the game. yeah, I read it. Right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't meet Cecil. I knew David Banks. David Banks. That was, was the, his other homie. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one who created the Mutt Bone character. Mm-hmm. David Banks was my mentor for fucking thirty years before he died, mm-hmm. like four years ago. So I'm deeply ingrained in motherfuckers who knew prior and, and helped him with his success, even Paul Mooney. And Paul is another one when you talk about him. I mean, you know, Paul, man, Paul Mooney ought to have got them fucking, and, and he's doing all right. He's rich. He's a millionaire. But as his genius, and, and genius as that motherfucker is, what he do, he should be massive. Paul Mooney? As for, yeah. yeah. But you know why they don't do that? Because he's a strong-ass black man on the stage. Right, clarify that strong ass black man on that stage talking about what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Paul is he's, he's, Paul's he's genius, brilliant. he's powerful, yeah. he's brilliant, you mm-hmm. know. But you know, who wants their dirty laundry out air it like that, you know? <laughs> like, 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 I, I study Paul, man, and he the way he he talks about the white folks, man, is incredible. Like, I'm like, I be sitting like, damn, like some of the stuff be true, yeah. but it's like, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the white folks is, is uh, they give you the platform, yeah. they got the studios, they giving you that, so let's be honest, like. I'm gonna hire you to to uh, dog me out. Yeah, but I mean, look at it this way: they don't like it, but they didn't totally blackball him. They didn't stop him from doing anything. He's still a multi-millionaire. No, because he, he's great. It's, yeah. just, it's just like, but one thing I love about comedy, man, the truth is funny. Yeah, you can't deny that the truth is funny, man. Yeah, it is. It is. So once again, man, congratulations on thanks, that. Thanks, thanks, I thanks, can't thanks. wait to you because, like I say, all my other, I know a lot of motherfuckers that went through the changes over there and got their room and everything, and I just stopped through right. and do shit on their nights. You mm-hmm. understand? And, and it's just good. But as far as going through this goddamn fucking initiation of, like I said, I went and did that shit back 94, 95. But you know I was going to get in. I mean, yeah. I was getting standing ovations. It's like, well, right. just we commit to show his ass. Paul is yours, mother. If it just ruins the motherfucker, take three yeah. months off. Off and, and come back like, yes, you're good enough to get in, but we're just not gonna let you get in like that. Like, man, kiss your mother. You know what's worse though? The uh, the Laugh Factory, the Laugh with Factory Benny, with I'm, Medina, the, not uh, Benny, but, uh, but, uh, Jamie, Medina. Jamie. Yeah, the yeah. Laugh Factory is so tough to get in, man. It's sad mm-hmm. that is that way. The Laugh Factory. It used to be uh, you go up there on Tuesday nights. You go you go, you go up there on Tuesday on Tuesday nights, mm. and no Tuesday. You got to be there at the the list comes out at six o'clock. Yeah. They take the first 15 right. that line up. Yeah. So, But you got to get there at 11 o'clock. And you got to stand outside in line until 5 o'clock. Not just a line, three or four blocks. <laughs> right. So you got to stand. You got to get there before. If you come number 16, you don't make it. Yeah. So you got folks standing in line from 11 o'clock in the, in the morning, yeah. 10 o'clock in the morning. And, and they stand. I did it until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And then... You sign a list, and then you don't perform until next Tuesday. And then if you sign a list, save you save you number three. I'll sign up for number three, four, five, six. Okay, you going up as number three. Ja- you don't know that Jamie don't come in until number fucking 11. Yeah. So now you think you you can do good at number three, but if Jamie ain't there to see you. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's why I never it's, went it, through it's, that it's shit. It's crazy, man. It's yeah. crazy. That's why I yeah, never we got a lot that. of activity. I waited exactly. for my folks to do their goddamn thing, and then and that's, if we if we was good at doing that, we wouldn't have to go through their fucking initiation. Mm-hmm. And once you get through there, then we bring each other through. I never, man, you know, fucking the way you gonna goddamn fucking do me like that. I, uh, but there's enough goddamn motherfuckers in this game now, and you because make it when you get through, you make sure you lead the way, man. I remember guy when guy got in, guy had the biggest mother guy Tory. Got to it, okay. Fucking Fat Tunes over there was like the biggest motherfucking right. night they I, ever had. I wasn't here, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, for years. So mm. once you get in there, you mm. in there now, now you creep your goddamn homies in. Like I said, you can't be Paul Mooney. And mm. to this day, like we talk about Paul Mooney, they still won't stop Paul Mooney from coming in that motherfucker sitting down in none of these other white clubs. So a man can be a man. You don't have to pull your ass open and sell your soul to do nothing. No, no. You just be yeah. uh, be yourself. Be authentic. That's my comedy. Nice. Just being true to who I am. And that's why, yeah. I, you know, I'm accomplishing certain things out here. And, that's, and yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want it no other way. Me yeah. being on that stage, being true to who I am. That's why I study Richard Pryor. That's why I listen to you on mm. Pandora and Spotify and stuff like that, man. Mm. I need If I'm going to do comedy... It got to be my truth. And yeah. if I feel like I'm not giving you my truth, then I'll, I'll ball out. Yeah. I ain't but you got in that line. You ain't coming. Man, like I said, a lot of these motherfuckers, you talking about being there at the at the place, line up in line. Man, you ain't no average motherfucker. You coming through there, you already got movie credits and shit. Yeah. So you ain't starting out on ground zero. So you got shit to work with. It's just that you invite the right people there to see you, man, and put the right team around you, and you'll be just fine. Man, I receive And, that. you know, motherfucker, if I ain't part of the crew, then... Come man. on, Al. You come on, Al. Come, come on, on, man. Come you. on. Come on. <laughs> hey, y'all, we got a lot of activity in the chat. Come on, man. You know you my boy. <laughs> Yo, we, man, we got to give him a microphone, man. Turn yeah. your mic up, man. Yeah. Y'all got headphones? Yeah, put the headphones on. Uh, yeah, got t- got well, I can hear you. got a call? <laughs> what they nah, say? I'm just saying there, there's a lot of activity in the chat room. So, uh, Lorraine says, appreciate your Cash App donations also. And Kevin Haynes says, all right, when he, uh, when, when, when you said, um, tell him to keep the pins on you. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> and um, Lorraine says, says to Kevin, he, he types like, Al. He what? He, he types like out. I guess when he said "all right," he was telling. He was. Uh, I guess he texts like out. Well, he gonna need a translator back there. Al, Cause I understand shit you said, man. Take that no, like you, type, man. like you type like no, a typewriter. I just mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he got there like Wu Tang over said, that mother. Well, Till yeah. can be appreciate being up in there. He's in there every week. That's one about him. I owe him a few dollars when we ever break. When it ever, when it does broke up, not if, but he's always in there. Mm. And the race since I know who that big beige bitch is. Tell her she needs to be out. Here, goddammit, because there's some other things that need to be done after this show. Now, here's some more, real quick. So, he said, How was so? So, Cabot was telling you, How was the the weekend? And um, did you hit the stage? Hit the stage, yeah, I did. Oh, when we did the uh, the comedy festival, the bars there. Was he there? How was that? Yeah, it was good. I mean, the the, yeah, the race sense was responding to him too, so that's why it was like around BT weekend. Some of that shit to get them play because I I performed and I recorded it. It was it was it was real cool. Where where was it at? Over in um Hollywood, over in uh, man, this play, I don't know, you remember, but it was you out here when Monet was doing the um. Mixed nuts. He used to own nah, mixed nah, nuts wasn't before. Well, yeah, uh, nah. before I got out here. Hands got over there. I got out here in two thousand eight. Yeah, last the year then because he did it from nineteen ninety to two uh, two thousand eight. Uh, so you might have caught it, caught it, caught the tail end of it. But he nah, did I like no, I probably yeah. I got yeah, it was a weekend festival, Saturday and Sunday. They had like comedy workshops and festivals and Man. everything during the day and it. Um, uh, seven to ten, they did the comedy. Speedy did it. Uh, David Ray Bond was there. Derek Ellis, a couple of that them. was Saturday. Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. You know what? Saturday, I did a show with uh Henry Coleman. Shout out to Henry. I did a show with him a yeah. private show. Then I was like, man, I went to the, you know, I'll be like, I went to the J spot, and I'll be like, man, I need to work on this. Craft. I went over there last night. I um, wasn't. It was good, but I didn't know what was going on. I mean, Chris Spencer, they said Chris was doing something over there. I'm probably going to go by his spot tonight. Well, I walked through the door, man, with a guest and get them to pick me. Go ask me. They look at you like you crazy, didn't they? They look at me like that. They just said my guest had to pay. Oh, my, my guest ain't going to pay a motherfucking thing. And this motherfucker, you out of your fucking mind? I ain't know who the fuck you I'm was. Gonna come, they, 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 they did know me. They just said it was a specific thing. And then she going to tell me, was, well, Buddy Lewis just paid for his guy. I don't give a fuck Buddy what Buddy Lewis. just did. 
I'm not paying for my guests to come in here, goddamn it, no matter what it is, $25 or $30, come in here, goddamn it, for the food liquor, that's for my enjoyment. But I'll be damned if I'm going to pay for a ticket for my guests, come in here and goddamn fucking pay for food and liquor to perform on nobody's stage. Talk to Jake, man. Make sure life. Jake hear that, man. I, did, I don't talk to him. He wasn't there last <laughs> night. And I was going there to talk to him. Right, right, right. And I'll talk to Chris about it last you, night. You I mean, it really upset no, me. No, I'm going to tell you what upset me. No, first of all, first of all, you know, I love the J-Spot. It's like one of the best spots, man. They're really, I mean, the J-Spot really helped me out, man. It really helped me become a better comedian, strengthen my craft, man. But I get it sometimes, you know, it, it you know it get tight in there you know sometimes it get tight you got to step away and you know I remember one time I was in like a couple weeks ago uh, my home girl came from Baltimore she's never she never seen me perform and I wasn't I wasn't signed to perform that night but I just you know you show up and then eventually you might go up mm. so I barred her to the show yeah. and I was like all right I'm just bring it to the show we just chill out whatever yeah. and they just got like Jay came in. And 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 kicked her, kicked her ass out. I was like, no, you got to go, you got to go. And it was just, you know, it was crazy. Sometimes you and, go off like but that. But then I heard, and then I heard that he had, you know, the situation. I think he have uh, 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 cancer right now, right? I don't know nothing about yeah, these cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay got uh, leukemia, some right now. Then I heard oh, the bad news. No, I heard yeah. nothing about that. Yeah, yeah. So he's fighting that man. So we going to put our prayers in for Mister Jay Brown. Hell, that man. motherfucker, man, he's still a multi-millionaire. He get the best. He he got a better chance of beating that shit than a lot of motherfuckers. Yeah, well, Jay we gonna, we, 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 we gonna put the that prayers that up for him, man. Well, and prayers, but prayers. He got millions. <laughs> prayers without money ain't shit. But listen, he got the money to put behind it. So he'll be all right. But I didn't know that. I'll a, call him yeah, as soon as I it's get a, it's, a, it's a lot of folks that that have millions and they can't beat what God designed for him to have. Man, who would just say God put that on him in well, the Well, let me not say God. In whatever situation, it's been times that people have a lot, millions of dollars. Yeah. And when cancer hits you or whatever diabetes hits you, no money All in the world going to stop that. All I'm saying is, you're absolutely right about that, mm -hmm. but you got a better chance if you got a few million and Jansen and Brown got that. He mm -hmm. had to spend every million I got. I don't know if I'd do that. He said, but I, you can't take it with you if I had to spend every million. Jay might be worth ten, fifteen million dollars, dude. That nigga got that. This motherfucker 10, been doing this shit. Million? That motherfucker God, been damn. doing this shit forty years, man. Man, it might be more than that. That nigga owe me two hundred dollars right now. <laughs> <laughs> But that's nah, just shit. bullshit. Nah, nah, just bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this was the prenup of the show. We're going to take a quick little break here, and then we're going to come back and get into subjects like Donald Trump. Donald and Trump. And his ignorant ass, the Me Too movement with Meets. Cuba Gooden Jr. and the oh, Ball. Oh, shit, Cuba. As well as Siamese twins, one being gay and one being straight. We'll be right back with Siamese that in a minute. When you see me, you can see it. California, California. When you see me, you can see it. California, California, California. Beach, it's California breeze, it's California bitches, our California needs, sun up, sun down, all smiles, no frowns, Cali life is like a circus, minus the clowns, I keep the top down, swags they turn, and there's so much hate, the weak get burn, every day is the right day, in Cali I do it my way, Kush keep the highway, sunset on Friday, promenade Saturday, Sunday to Beverly, fuck the forecast, we know what the weather be, post on the strip, showing off the whip, real nigga love from the bloods and the cribs, Cali from the valley to the beaches, to the flatland, Cali on my plate, I'm like a big old fat man. The desert is dessert, grapevine growing perp. All play, no work. Got my boy about to surf. When you see me, you can see it. California, California. When you see me, you can see it. California, California, California. Blowing in that Cali breeze I love life like my niece Cali train Palm trees and beaches Sunsets and clubs VIPs Bad bitches Hoes and things Throw up the West Represent your city And your state Come to California Shout out to Big Face We on a Cali tip Let's take a Cali trip LA to the Bay That's that Cali shit Banging Dr. Dre on the way That's that Cali shit Bump the Snoop Dogg every day That's that Cali shit DJ Quick in my shit That's that Cali shit I'm a Cali chick Look to the Cali chick Back to the hood Off a satin on my Cali Queen of the West Side, B F L Y C A L I. That's what I be on. Cali is my home. My home is where the heart is. When you see me, you can see it. California, California. When you see me. 
Kush lit, riding up Wilmington 100 ENT, nigga ball like Wimbledon. So California had to pull the Impala out. Ask baby mama, favorite rapper that she all about. Same nigga that these hoes can't get a dollar out. Still bag a bad bitch when I'm out and about. California living fast and I'm loving it. Toss a few stacks for the fuck of it. Beats. When you see me, you can see it. California. California. You see me, you can't see it. California, 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 California. Tumor Town at Mars Media. Hey. Once again, thank y'all for tuning in. Well, the call in numbers, all them smart mouth motherfuckers in that chat room tell them they can call in. The number is 323 293 3375. Now, let's get to the meat of the order here now. Donald Trump is under fire again, and rarely do I talk about Trump on this show because, man, I get. I just refuse to let him goddamn dominate my mind and my thinking like he does the rest of the the rest of the world. Um, every day he does something to make sure you talking about him. But he has been accused now of another sexual harassment case. This one is actually rape based on what this broad is saying. Hmm. And um, then once again, he is defiant. Instead of this man saying that. I haven't raped anyone. All he said was, "I have." She's not my type. As if to say, uh, yes, I rape bitches, but I wouldn't rape no ugly bitch like this. In essence, that's what he was saying. Can we pull up that clip in, and then we want to see what this woman looked like? And then we can understand, you know, perhaps what Dun Dun was talking about. Echoes similar language. Let's just play what he said about Jessica Leeds in front of a crowd. When you looked at that horrible woman last night, you said, I don't think so. I don't think so. She would not be my first choice, that I can tell you. Man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. He also called Miss Universe fat. Miss Piggy, I think he called her. Miss Universe, one of the most beautiful women in the solar system, and he called her fat. Um, the other thing that he said is that you are totally lying. He said, again, in this interview, new interview, he said, totally lying. I don't know anything about her. I know nothing about this woman. I know nothing about her. She is. It's just a terrible thing that people can make statements like that. He's denied all 15 women who've come forward. He denies. He turns it around. He threatens any attacks. Let's talk about wh- what you say happened, because uh, obviously the, the details of it all matter. And this is, mm-hmm. I should point out, just part of this is one person you talk about in your book. This is not a book about Donald Trump. This is not there's no. not Donald Trump on the cover. This is about no. your life. And we don't even mention his name. I mentioned his name once in the book. Once. So you were in you say you were in Bergdorf Goodman. I was coming out of Bergdorf's, which was, was a store I heard you liked a lot. It's a posh and cozy. Your and whole just, face lights up when you talk about Bergdorf. I, just, by the way. I was just there today. Okay. It just, I just loved it. So I was coming out and he was coming in. He was standing out and he put his hand like this. So I did not go through the revolving door. He came in. He said, hey, you're that advice lady. And I said, hey, you're that real estate tycoon. He said, come advise me. I want to buy a present. I said, oh, for who? He said, for a girl. 
So I was enchanted. It was such a great moment. Uh-huh. So how about the handbags? Oh, no, he doesn't want a handbag. Well, how about a hat? So he strolls to the... Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What's up, y'all? We alive. The two. difference about this bitch here is she's not even pretending to cry. Who? What? I mean, at least they all, any of these women who do this, I mean, and nobody supports that. Any motherfucker that's got them raping and fucking sexually abusing women and all that type of shit, I'd be the first one to say you should have your head blow it off, and I would do that, especially if you did it to somebody in my family. But we have to look at the other side and say they're all women who can't use the goddamn law that they benefit and ruin men. This woman here, his name is E.J. Carroll, who has a book out right now that calls Why Do We Need Men? She wrote that. But when you, you look at this, I mean, God damn. I mean, you, what I'm trying to say is it's like I, and I'm. Spit that shit out, man. <laughs> I ain't seen about four or five nice-looking women in the whole Me Too movement. Oh, For the majority shit, of the fact, man... I, every time I come on the show... You, you can sit over there and be clearing something. I'm going to help you be clearing something. Man. You ain't got to agree with nothing I'm saying, but you got to think of this shit, man. You look at these... Most of the majority of these man. women, man... They are women that you don't... So, so what are you saying? You got to... You can't... You can't... You got to look a certain way to be raped? What are you Ooh, saying? Would you, rape, you wouldn't rape anybody, but if you had to rape no, somebody, no, would it be a bull? Matter, it don't Nobody matter. has to rape man. a bulldog face, bitch, man. They oh, give it up. Come on. Oh, you're wrong, man. You're I'm wrong, not man. wrong on that, man. You're wrong, man. You don't you're know, wrong. but come on, man. No. You're wrong, no, man. No, you're wrong, no. man. Looks is not everything, Ladies and gentlemen, 323 let me know what you think. Oh, don't have to rape. I mean, that, that, that woman looks like a goddamn fucking plucked chicken. Come on, man. Like... Listen here, man. It, so, and somebody, so, uh, somebody, but, but somebody. You got, and then you got, why life, didn't you, you got, do it back then? Listen, you got to understand. Why didn't you? It's, it's almost like the Bill Cosby thing. Even though Trump will never I go get, to jail. I get it, I get, why didn't you hit him up back in 94, I do, 95? I do, wanna, I do understand that. I understand that. You know, I understand that. Like, I think you should, you should say something when it actually happened, you know, at that moment, you know. But you got to understand, like, what's, what's, uh, what's, what's not attractive to you is it is a uh, is attracted to someone else, so that's 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 how life is. You know, it's been. T- I might I, I might see a chick that's that I think is fine. You might look at him like, oh my god, I can't. She's not my type. So we can't just say say that. You know, love is where you find it, man. Uh, shit, who? Well, what <laughs> what does love, love have to do with rape? It got a lot. I'm just <laughs> saying. I'm just saying. Like, love. I'm just talking about far as in looks. Like people love what they love. People like what they like. And like I said, man, that's just, this 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 topic is it's it's crazy. I lo- I don't really like talking about rape stuff like that because uh you know like I said I was a victim to that stuff when I was younger. So it's kind of like you know it, it touched that me too stuff touched home with me too. So it's like let me just. It's sad. I think the president, man, I laugh Wait at him. Wait, Wait, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, now, you said you you were molested and raped. Yeah, when I was a kid. But you said that was by a woman. Exactly. There's a firm fucking difference. It's not no firm difference. Rape is rape, bro. Rape is rape. There's no firm difference. Rape is rape. You, if you took it from me, you took it from me. You know, if if you was a, if you was older than me, well, and if, man, I, if I was, I if, I was 10, if I was ten, if I was ten, if I was ten, eleven I'd years be old, damn, if goddamn fucking if, older if, woman, and I did, hell, I started fucking at like what eleven, and that was older women. I would never got that unless somebody just brutally did something to you, beat your ass, man. And just man if I'm 10, 11 years and old, first of all, how did your dick get hard for somebody to rape you? Listen, a woman ain't got nothing but a gay. Hole. Listen, you have listen, your listen, dick listen, has to listen, get hard listen, to go in true. something. That's not true, man. That's not true. Listen. So she just not, took I'm a not, shoe no, horn no, no, I'm not and gonna, slid your dick in. No, I'm not going to get into the, uh, you know, the details of what happened or how it happened. Just know that it did happen when I was a kid. And therefore, you know, I don't care if the person, you know, if, if, if I was younger and that person was older, if she sexually assaulted me, if she did something to me sexually, that's rape. Because I was a minor. But how many goddamn women go to jail for that? I don't know. I don't got the statistic, but I'm saying it's rape is rape. Did it it twist you? Because most of these Yeah, that fucked me up because I'm talking about it to this day. But I'm saying, did it twist your sexuality? Where you don't want to deal with women anymore? 
No, it, it, that's that's not that's not uh, that's that was not. But it's different factors. You know, factions, I love yes, I, I, I love I love a, I love women. You yeah. know, like like so it never took my attraction away from women, but uh, it 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 uh, it damaged me. It damaged me sexually, you know, because I was introduced to sex at a, a, a time where I wasn't ready for. So, therefore, you got to understand, a lot of kids uh, get pushed in those situations. Mm. Now, as they get older, they're like, damn, they think that, okay, they become sex addicts. Yeah. Because you think, okay, this is love. This is what, this is my addiction right here. You know, so a lot of kids get caught up like that. Yeah, but you a man, dude, for the most part. We like that. It don't got nothing about okay, being well, a man. Okay, what about the men that I'm one? If that, I'm 50 years old. I'm not like that now. But, man, I had a sexual addiction in my 20s and 30s, but nobody molested me. Men, Everybody man, is it's different. just, it's, it's, yeah, you're right. Everybody is everybody, different. Everybody's but... household is different. You know, I'm a crack baby. I grew up in the '80s. Then that might have more to do with it than the, than the, the actual rape of it. The crack, the crack but, shit. But at the end of the day, what's done is done. If it happened, it happened. Regardless if it was crack, whatever, whatever caused that woman to do that, and she know that I was fucking ten years old. Yeah. She, she mean, even though she had her disposition. Now, let's there's a, there's a whole lot of shit that's going on said here. Now, I need to know exactly. <laughs> What this woman did to you? You sound like this is not no, no basic shit. Like you, her, I, I, you her, know, her making her I, fuck you. Or this, this, I, you, you, you're talking this, to me this, like this, this woman this, made this you do some this, shit this, that I, was this, just this, straight this, vile. This, this what happened. This what happened. All right. This what happened. You know, I'm saving it for my book, but I, I give it out. This what happened. I'm ten years old. Right. I'm selling crack cocaine, and I thought we brought, it, brought this up before. I'm selling. Crack co- I'm selling crack cocaine at ten years old. Yeah. The guy I'm working for, he's 14. Right. So I'm standing on the corner. I'm selling crack. I'm selling yellow caps. I'm 10 years old working with guys that's like, they in their 20s. Mm. Dope fiends coming up to me. So I remember one particular night, my boy was like, my my, my cousin, well, you know, he wasn't really my blood, blood cousin, but we call each other family, whatever. So he called me one day, and he was like, no, we, used to get, we was on the corner. He was like, yo, uh, I got to go and take this to this lady. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm following him. I'm young. I don't know nobody, no better. So I remember we going upstairs, go up to the second second floor, back, and I remember an older lady. She had to be like in her 30s. Older lady. She looked like she could be my motherfucking aunt. But physically, what does she look like? This had to be a hideous looking bitch for you to be upset. Well, if we giving her crack, she had to be. <laughs> All right, well, let's just say that. So, 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 <laughs> so, but my thing is, my thing is, this was the first time I was exposed to anything sexually. All right, I, I never you. seen it. I never knew about it. Okay. I Nothing about sex. Yeah. I knew about selling drugs before that. Yeah. And all I remember is my boy laying on the floor, having sex with this lady, yeah. whatever it was called. I didn't know what it was called. All I remember, he's laying on the floor with her, yeah. doing it. The next thing you know, it's, it's like, your turn. So I go down there. I'm laying on the floor with her, doing what I'm doing. But like you, but like you said, you, you know, my, you're right. I might not be getting hard. I think, you know, I think I probably peed in the motherfucker crackhead. <laughs> I was the first nigga at R. Kelly. I peed in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? This is from my comedy cover from my pain. So, yeah, you so, 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 put so, that on so but what I'm saying is, she knew better. I didn't know better. Yeah, you kind of got to possibly do better if you sell her dope. What you mean? But at the end of the day, she still knows she's older. She's in her 30s. But she's she, on crack we, that that's you not, guys bought her. Yo, yo. Your little look, boys bought her. But you got to But you got to understand that I don't know what I'm doing. She got more uh, uh, recognition of her mind, of control of who she is. Even though she was on a, on whatever she was on, she still know right from wrong. I'm ten years old. I don't really know right from wrong. I'm just so in the moment. That you, some mentally had could have had to been, have been wrong. With you that can't. Man. But we. But we, But at the end of the day, what's done is done. Yeah, it is. And I, I hear that's, you why, talking about that. that's like, why. That's we, why. That's before, why. That's why. That's why. That's why. When we talk <clears> about. <throat> The Me Too movement and rape and stuff like that. That's why it's a touchy subject with me because I am a victim of that. And that's shit. why people need to talk about it. 
You can't just push shit in the goddamn closet, man, because it's touchy. My thing, How can you heal without talking about it? I have a whole lot of just, goddamn issues, just, too. It ain't nothing like that. But everybody has issues. But, but you, for me, too, and anybody else, when you want somebody to shut down on your shit, then your uh, ass can't. But, but the way I'm you control about people, stuff. But the way you, you cannot laugh at anybody else's pain at all if you don't exactly. want anybody to talk about your shit and make fun of it. Just stop laughing. But at the end of the day, I'll... You got to accept people's story for their story. Right. We do, but I mean, I can accept motherfuckers calling me a black motherfucker and all type of shit. Man, no matter what you've gone through, you will never know the abuse that a dark skinned black man has gone through. But I ain't sitting there, sitting there blaming nobody for that. What you mean? I so do what, I so do. what you're trying to say, I can't blame her? I, I, what are you yeah. saying? Are you the president of Me Too? I'm speaking in what general. You, no, no, I'm asking There's you. There's some of these my, people my situation, that go to... My they, situation, you telling me I can't blame her? Is that I didn't say, me? that's not what I'm saying okay. to you. I'm just saying people talk about it. Here, you a comedian. You joke right. about people's deficiencies and all that type of shit. Can we laugh about this shit in here? As opposed to not saying anything about me. But I can laugh at no, you. No, 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 no. Well, what I'm saying is, that we, 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 no, we, no, no, no. I'm no, that's why I do stand up. Because I take my pain and turn it to comedy. I have no problem with that. But this is where you draw the line. You, you don't have the right to say, look how she looked. Why would somebody rape her? That's not that's not fair to say because it what, is fair to say. No, it's not because what's attractive you're to you. Contradicting but no, 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 no. You're what's contradicting attra- what you just said. How? Because you just told me I didn't have the right to do that to you. So how you have the right to tell what me you mean, how what, I feel about what it? What you mean? I had, what you mean? You don't have the right. You don't you, have the right to say that. That what you? I don't understand what you're saying. My opinion is my opinion on this. We don't have the we could we could agree to disagree is what I'm saying. Right. That shit you're right, you have an opinion. But all I'm saying is it's just not fair to say, look at her, why would somebody do that to her? That's it all is I'm saying. To me. Okay. And I'm also a comedian. Right. And if that's what my punchline is, it is what it is. There it is. Hey, check this out, y'all. So um Cabot says, Lionel, show us, a, show, show us on a doll where she touched you. Man, come on, man. I don't want, like, <laughs> oh, no, that, that's man. what he said. I don't, you know I don't I mean? like I reading like, those type of, tell him to call in and talk to me, man. I don't want to read that. He that type of stuff. Like, come on, man. He's a sure sure get, if, tell, tell him, if they want to do comedy, get on stage, man. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop, stop doing laws. Chat, I don't do all that blah stuff. Like, you know, you want to do tell yeah. jokes, get on stage and tell jokes. Wow. I, and that's what I told these other guys, right? I'll be in front of, <laughs> look, I'll be in front of the improv, right? Yeah. And it's Black Knight. It's yeah. Black Knight for the improv. Look, it's Black Knight for the improv on Monday night. You yeah. see all these non funny ass comedians, you know, no, in front of the improv, mm. you know, in front of the improv and, uh, Going at each other, rip. That's the shit I used to do in the barber shop. You, know I mean? you got some. You got some comedians that's doing that's funny as shit. Yeah. But you got a lot of comedians that doing it that's not funny. And 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 I and I and I walked past and I was and one nigga said something to me, and I was like, "Yo, bro, nigga, be funny on stage. <laughs> you up here trying to be funny with with motherfucker Corey Hogman and 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 Michael Blackson? These motherfuckers millionaire. These niggas got money. Yeah, you up here clowning yourself in front of these motherfuckers and these niggas about to get in the motherfucking uh, uh, Bentley truck <laughs> and, and they about to turn up, turn the corner getting the baddest girls. Got well, like got money. Sell out shows, and you up here in front of the fucking improv trying to entertain these niggas instead of you trying to get on fucking stage Talk and make a living for yourself. Talk to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm, that's real. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, yeah. fuck you. I'm gonna stand in front of you, and I'm, I'm gonna go toe to toe with you. And yeah. I know damn well you ain't funny on stage, and I'm gonna hit you with some shit, and you gonna take some of my material. No, nigga. Yeah, I did those days in the barbershop. Like I, I don't bag. I don't. Y'all don't have yeah, like, I can bag. And bag and that's how I bag. learned how to do comedy. Comedy bagging, that's easy for me. Yeah. But I ain't bagging with no non funny motherfuckers. <laughs> exactly. You should have slapped it for even trying. Yeah, I told nigga, like, nigga, be funny on stage. Mm. And I'm not being cocky. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. Yeah. But my thing is, nigga, don't come for me. And I see you on fucking stage, and you like a deer in headlights. That's when you should have went in and started heckling him. I, I don't do that. I, I respect the crap. <laughs> right. Anyway, let me What's wrap this hey, little B2 quick. shit up in a, in, a, in a ribbon so we can move on to something else. All I'm saying about the thing is, man, based on my opinions, it seems like a goddamn fucking crusade for ugly bitches. I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks, and that's just the way I think about it. This shit is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think he might have did what he goddamn did. But white men been doing shit like that. But now they putting it on us. They putting it on the R. Kelly's and anybody that's guilty. 
If you got them fucking weak enough, if you, from Bill Cosby or whether Mike Tyson did it, nigga, if you got to brutalize a goddamn woman and rip her clothes off and fuck her, you are a sick bitch. But I'm also not going to ignore the fact that there are bitches who abuse the law and make up lies. That's where I'm coming from on it. Now, moving right along, this Dominican Republic shit, um, I don't know why Americans keep going over there. But they keep going, and they say the death toll is up to now like to 11 people. Um, let me play this video the, of, of what the, the latest thing that happened, and let's check out what's going on here, and let's see where you're coming from on that. All right, let's talk about the growing concern and a growing mystery in the Dominican Republic. In the last 18 months, at least 10 Americans have died while visiting the Caribbean nation, three of them from our area. Families say they aren't getting any answers, so now the FBI is joining the investigation. News Force Paisy Jang is live in the newsroom with the latest for us, Paisy. Natalie, certainly troubling so many deaths with no real common thread or cause. Some people have reportedly died after drinking from the hotel mini bars. Some people have died with fluid in their lungs. Different clues with no official conclusions. This island paradise is facing greater scrutiny as more Americans die under mysterious circumstances. The latest person to come forward is Annette Weddington, mother of Bronx resident Terrence Richmond. Her suspicions raised because of conflicting information. Told me he, he was hiking and that he fell and had a heart attack. This is what they told me. And I did not buy that because I knew that he was healthy. Weddington says her son taught gymnastics and jogged three times a week. He visited the Dominican Republic last year. The autopsy said that he had a fractured skull. He had been kicked in his back. His knuckles were bruised like he had been fighting. This is what the autopsy report says. But the death certificate says he died from a heart attack. A Dominican tourism official says the preliminary autopsy for 55-year-old Joseph Allen of Avenel, New Jersey, states he died of a heart attack and showed no signs of violent trauma. I do think that something is off and I think it needs to be investigated. Heart attack is also the official cause of death for 53-year-old Layla Cox from Staten Island, who was found dead in a different hotel and different city. Her blood samples are being sent to the Staten Island Hospital where she worked for testing. I truly believe in some way, shape or form the Dominican Republic is responsible for my mother's death. So far, over 18 months, 10 Americans have died in the DR, in different cities and different hotels, with no apparent common thread. Except in some cases, people died after drinking from the mini bars. The FBI is now assisting in three death investigations that took place at the Bahia Principe Hotel in La Romana. What does this mean for the three million Americans who visit the DR each year? They should be very concerned and take extra precautions because anytime there's a pattern, uh, we know that there's a problem. Career law enforcement officer Steve Cardian says these deaths, while not seemingly connected, are troubling. His son's yeah. visiting the DC. No. It's been a while since I've been over there. I've and, never uh, been. I thought about going, but I was like, ah. Uh, huh? No. This is crazy. No, I was man. saying after that happened because I really wanted to go there so bad, but I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I'd rather go to Puerto Rico than that. I yeah, but anywhere. yeah, I agree with that. And um, that, that, like I say, that, that it's it's weird and it's strange. But you know, anytime I see anything on this news, you have to take it with a grain of salt too. Now, uh, it's, it's, it's it's a reason why they're putting that out there. And um, the first of all, I don't know why anybody would drink anything out of a motherfucking mini bar. Hell, I don't do mm. that in hotels over here. Nigga, a shot of liquor is $36.75 yeah. so to drink anything. A bottle of water is $20. So why would you drink anything out of a mini bar anywhere? But mm. from the way this shit is, is, is looking, it's like obviously somebody is poisoning shit in these rooms and they don't know who the fuck is doing it. But it's only Americans that's being done in. So mm. what do you think about this? I don't really, I mean, it's sad. I think somebody need to go over there and, uh, you know, straighten them out. They're investigating you know? it now. Yeah. But somebody, then, too, you know, we, you, that's another thing. When I say I don't trust with these people, a lot of shit they put in, they put in the news is, and they, who knows whether this shit is staged for them to yeah. get them just attack these people over there. Why would they just fucking assault Americans? And I wonder how many Dominican Republicans would have been killed in America over the last 18 months. Mm. We don't know that shit. So... 
I just thought that out there, I'm sure a lot of people you have heard about it, but if you intend to travel, be, fo- be careful where you go. And if you go over to that motherfucker, make sure you take your own goddamn water and alcohol and everything else, and there are people around you where you will not be subjected to being the 12th victim over there. That's all I can say about it. Now, I said that we were going to discuss this issue about, um, have you heard about I, I it? Okay, we go with that briefly. Lakers, we got about baby. Ten minutes, man. Lakers, baby. I don't. What you think about the trade? I think it was a. Uh, it, it was good to get Anthony Davis, but I, I feel like it was. Um, they gave up too much to get one man, and you don't know whether based on health or life or anything whether this this is going to be a lot. You don't give up no goddamn seven people for one motherfucker. You I, don't do that for goddamn Michael Jordan, the Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I think they should have gave. I think what they did was awesome. Uh, I think the players that they gave up wasn't really that good. Uh, you know, even though they they developing, but I, you know, nah, I was, you know, yeah, I don't think they was good at all. They was okay. Well, but I can understand we're giving up three motherfuckers, but I'm talking about the draft picks and everything. Well, yeah. well, here's the thing about the draft picks. Uh, you gotta understand, you got people that actually. That's that's doing a draft pick. They see before, you know. Mm. They they see what's going on in twenty twenty five, twenty thirty. Who's coming out? What's the potential? So if you think about within the next three years, and we have in the last, I think it was a, a in the third pick is a third year. We got that protected. So I think nobody's really that good is coming out. You know, it's not to me. You know, if you look you look at the players that's coming out, who's really coming out? Last year, this time that you know anything about Zion Williams. Yeah, I know about him because he's in high school murdering everybody. Yeah, well, I didn't know anything about yeah. him. And I yeah. damn sure didn't know nothing about him. But, but here's the ago. thing, though. I'm not a fan of Zion. I, I, res- I respect. His, you know, he, he, I, I respect that he, that he's, 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 he's a beast. He, he go hard. He come to work. You know, he's blue collar. I respect that. But as a, as a, because uh, I play ball too. As a, uh, all around skill wise. Uh, I don't. I don't respect that because he. You got in the NBA. You have to do more than dunk. You have. You have to do more. You know, it's like because you're not gonna be dunking all those six eight. I mean, look at Blake Griffin. Blake, Blake, still, Blake Griffin yeah, had to switch his was, game up. Yeah, but it, 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 Blake Griffin had Alvin Gentry too. This kid is still only 18 years old, yeah. and he has a good coach in Alvin Gentry. I'm just saying that they gave what they with Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Julius Randle. They sent him there last year. And then it's Josh Hart, boy. These little young boys have the potential now that really the Lakers trying to chase Golden State, motherfucker. Y'all just potentially built an empire that will be busting your motherfucking ass even if you get past Golden State. Those young boys not that good. They don't need but a couple of stable veterans there, man. They are. They're not that good, man. I'm telling you, Lonzo, Lonzo Ball cannot shoot. He you can learn shoot. that, man. man you know how many people not, came in the league that couldn't goddamn shoot the basketball and you learn how to do it? He's not learning. You focus on what he, what he can do. He play hell of a defense. Man. I mean, he got them fucking steals. I don't block. think he can shoot. I don't think he's going to get he better as a shooter. He can develop that. Nah, well, let me we see. We know Eagle can ball. Ingram, you know Josh Ingram, Hart, Josh Hart can ball. Man, they, it's, they just mediocre players, man. It's mediocre. They're not. Lakers got stars, baby. We got Magic. We had Kareem, man. We had Worthy. We had A.C. Green, man. We had Kobe. We had Shaq. We had Nick the Quick, baby. Come on, man. We we got I stars am over a here, man. Fan, we got stars over I here. If not... you ain't no star, you got to get get out of here. We okay. want you. Right. We really ain't want LeBron. Oh, we ain't you, want LeBron. What the, but we take it. And I'm really right. That right. We take it? I wanted. It. I didn't care whether he came in right. first, but the fact that they fucked up, goddamn, the next ten years. What I'm looking at. It's not ten you years. You broke it's up a years. goddamn team. They wasn't that good for a guy that is 34 years old. Ain't got no more than four or five good years left Ooh. to build some shit for him. It's okay. And I just don't I'd rather do that, that than have those those mediocre bums on the Lakers. Some people, listen, I'm gonna be growing, honest, man. man. We got, I've been go Laker, back and look at what got them. Le- Steph listen, Curry. I've been a Laker fan. You go back and look at what Steph Curry yeah. and Clay Thompson was doing back listen. in 2009, 2010 when they first got there. You have to build towards listen that, here. man. As a Laker, when you get on the Lakers, either you got it or you don't. The Lakers, and therefore, and therefore, therefore. I, I feel like we was giving out jerseys to people that's not worthy. 
You got to be worthy to have a fucking Laker jersey, man. We just giving out jerseys. Yeah. Lonzo Ball yeah. should have never been a motherfucking Laker, man. A lot of those guys that got drafted should have never been a Laker. And speaking Come of on, him, man. Kobe, Kobe, that baby. you mixed them up I'm, now. I'm Lakers for I'm Lakers, yeah. man. It yeah. is, man. Yeah, yeah, because I'm glad you went there because I'd almost forgot that because he was in this Me Too shit. I want to mention his daddy. You saw what they did to him last week? Yeah, he was wrong. He was wrong. Yes, he was wrong. He was wrong. Because at the end of the day, when you're on a platform like that and you got your own organization, like, like, far as like, uh, you got to be professional all the time. You got to stand. Because he might, he said it. But you got to understand, sometimes your eyes can say what your mouth want to say. Man, what are the sexual connotations to switching gears? That shit ain't Did you see how he, he looked right when she said, uh, hey, hey, Lionel, hey, 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 uh, 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 LeVar, let's, let's switch gears for this topic. And that's the key. And this is what he she said. She took it there. Listen, no, no, she, no, she said, let's switch gears. Meaning, right. let's switch the conversation. You know, that, that, that's terms. And that's the and way when he, he looked did at it. Yeah, you can switch he looked, he looked up, he looked up, got into a, a, a real a pose, and he was like, we can switch gears anytime. So, therefore, his eyes, you got to stand body language, facial expressions. That wasn't professional. You gotta understand. She's still a woman that's fighting for a, a, a priest, just fighting for her rights to even sit in in the chair with those guys. Not too many females can sit there and have those conversations. All I'm saying is, he gotta conduct himself more professional. She asked a question. Right. Can hey, we, we gotta switch call gears? Yes, right. And he said we can do that anyway. Do th- here's the thing. Do I There's think- nothing sexual. Do I-, I ain't nigga in 50 years. Way, and there I- was nothing in, in my saying, life. I feel There's like- nothing about switching gears and sexual at do all. I- Listen, do I, think- do I think that the world now is so sensitive and soft? Yes. It is. It is. I will say that because... I grew up watching uh, uh, George Jefferson, Archie Bunker, uh, uh, Red G, uh, 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 Red Fox. You know, uh, I grew up watching that stuff. So, mm. there, so therefore, I'm just like, come on, come on, like, like everything somebody say is like, oh, oh, well, look, look at this, look at this. Even stand up comedy. I just seen a video that a guy said something. I don't know what he said, and somebody in the stand was ready to. Tear his ass up. Yeah, we, he, this shit. Hey, y'all, we got a got phone call. Co- huh? We got a phone call. All right. Yo, yo, who <laughs> this? Oh, what's going on now? This is, this is Kevin Haynes. Hey, man, what's going on with it? Oh, not too much. Yeah, man, you done waited in the last few minutes to call in. Go ahead and get in what you want to say right quick, man. What's the word? Doing, Lionel? You doing good? You okay, brother? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm good, man. As long as, long as I can get on and say tell these jokes, man, I'm good, brother. <laughs> All right, man. I just wanted to check on you. No, uh, yeah, I'm just messing with you. Uh, yeah, I, I know y'all switched topics. I had to change my depends. I wanted to speak on the the, the Dominican Republic thing. Okay. I just had a I just had a homie that just got back. Mm-hmm. And and he he doesn't do the resort thing. Right. He he uh. He goes and, and he stays in the city, gets him a a, a, a no name hotel, and mm. uh, uh, and he just kind of bounces around by himself. He he uh, hooks up with females on WhatsApp and you know sets up his whole trip before he goes. Right. And he's really not that not that big of a drinker. Okay. And he uh, he walks around and and, and kind of does his thing and and hasn't had any problems and you know i hit him up because he i know he, he you know he's planning on going back he's been a couple times yeah you know he he was thinking that that it's a it it is a little bit of foul play that it's just kind of a money grab from the people from the resort yeah you know that they're they might be dropping stuff on people's drinks yeah, i can so, believe that i can i can definitely believe that something that just isolated it is but if it just if it keeps happening Hey, you really got to watch your back going. You got to watch your back going anywhere, man. I mean, even around here, shit, in, in a bar, man, you don't, if you got out drinking with, I know a lot of people just leave, they drink on a bar and go out and start dancing and go to the bar. I don't leave my booze with nobody. Yeah, I think we get to, we, the, a society is making us uh, just letting our guard down more. Like, even like getting Uber drivers and, you know, uh, taking stuff from people. And, yeah. you know, it's so much. Because back in the day growing up, you remember people saying, don't do this, be careful with this. You know, you yeah. got those things. But, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the, the other quick thing about the DR is it, it's not just Americans. I know the count's pretty high. Yeah. You know, that rings, that rings alarms over here. But it's also European, you know, European natives. Right. You know, people from, from the continent over there. So it, it it's not just us. It's, 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 there is something 
going on that might be needed to be looked into. But, mm. You know, because I was told, so I was told as blacks, yeah, as, as blacks, like when we lead a, uh, you know, the states and go to different country, we're like people love us, you know. That's what yeah. I was told. People yeah. love us, like. That's what he's yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. It was like, yo, he man, you. Around, they, they treat him good. You know, he treats everybody with respect. And mm-hmm. he, yeah. he doesn't do the resort thing at all. You know, he, he's trying to do the little local thing. And, right. And he, you know, he hasn't had any kind of problem. Oh, wow. So, so that, 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 that brings up a, a scenario that, 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 that all 11 motherfuckers over there got killed because everybody's not innocent. People just assume that people get killed, they are automatically innocent. But who knows that these motherfuckers have got them that, that have been done in over there. Maybe they did something they had no business doing. Nobody ever wants to. I, I'm optimistic and I'm also pessimistic, man, and try to look through. I got two goddamn eyes. I try to look through all goddamn lenses. It's just sad. Just because somebody vacation. got them fucking get killed or drop dead. You know, that shit happens every damn day behind somebody doing something they had no business doing. Man, they... And they hungry over there too. It could just be, you know, the straight, the straight strong arm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's that ball player that's over there, are. right quickly. What was his name? The ball player from over there that plays baseball. He Four got teams. shot. Yeah. He got shot. He's from over in, there. That was, oh, that was in Dominican, huh? Yeah. He's from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And went all the way to Boston to get fixed up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they got him out of there. Yeah, well, Kavit, man, thanks for calling in, man, but I got to get up ready to wrap it up out of here. Man, I'm calling in early. You should have did that. You was in the chat room. Shit, now I got to get right, ready to wrap up the chat. All right, I'm going to let y'all go. Make sure you walk Lionel to his car, all right? All right, <laughs> uh, man, take it easy, man. <laughs> all right, man, thank you. All right, man. Tell them where you gonna be so we get. Ah uh, man, somebody. actually tomorrow I'm at the uh, the uh, Acme uh, Comedy Theater. Well, that's over in uh, in uh, NoHo. Uh, yeah, North Hollywood off of Lancashire, the Acme Comedy Theater. Okay, uh, yeah. I'm there tomorrow at eight o'clock. All right, and uh, yeah, you know, I'm just out here grinding, man, grinding, baby. Yeah, well, keep on doing yeah, it, man. Yeah. Keep that white man loving you, cause I'm gonna need you to come yeah. and pull. <laughs> Let me through the back door. Oh, no, they, I keep doing this show, nigga. They might. <laughs> I keep doing this motherfucking show, nigga. Like, oh, Lionel, you know that black mother. <laughs> Yo, man, man this you your boy, man. Lionel Dark, man. Yeah. Add me on Instagram, Facebook, man. And, you know, thanks for having me, Al, man. It's always a pleasure, man. All righty. All right. My name's Al Tuma. Y'all know where to find me. And if you don't, just Google me. And I'll be here every Wednesday at 6.30. Thank y'all for tuning in once again this week. And we'll see you next week. More terrible from the Great Train Robbery. Wild up at with Joel. Navajo, Seminole. Wanted, haunted. Things that done in life will go down.